Hello again. I have quite a collection of books on the subject of race and racism, including very modern ones on the subject. There's a puzzle, though, when reading these books carefully, and that is that certain things are taken to be axiomatic and the authors do not even discuss their reasons for holding these views. This is odd, since some of the writers I have here are actually um, scientists. Here's Adam Rutherford's book on um, how to argue with a racist. He's a geneticist. Uh, we've got things like this, Anjali Saini book about um, the return of race science and so on. I've got loads of these books. It's a particular interest of mine. Adam Rutherford is a gen geneticist, so you might expect him to explain why he holds particular opinions about the heritability of human qualities. It is as though those who wrote these books, though, have a blind spot which prevents them from seeing what they are missing, or rather what they are missing out in their books. Before going further, I want to make it clear that I'm not an expert on genetics, and so I'm not championing this view or that. I am asking a simple question. Why the answers to the questions which I'll pose in this video seem to be missing from books written by people who do know about genetics? All these books, the ones that I've just shown you, accept that physical traits <coughs> such as hair type, skin colour and so on, are inherited according to the genetic information provided by the parents of a child. They point out quite correctly that such things vary from group to group and they also vary widely within ethnic groups. So that although Arabs tend to be dark skinned with brown eyes and black hair, there are also those with blue eyes and fair hair. It's all a matter of statistics. Now let's think about mental characteristics and personality. Here's a book by Francis Collins, who headed the Human Genome Project for 15 years, and he may be seen in the thumbnail to this video. He's acknowledged to be one of the greatest geneticists in the world. In this book, he talks about twin studies and the fact that it is not only physical characteristics which can be inherited, like some physical features, uh, the mental traits, we can call them, or personality traits, can depend, of course, on the child's environment as well as genetic inheritance. In the case of physical things, a child might inherit genes which would cause him to grow tall. But if he suffers from malnutrition in childhood, if he grows up in an area where there's a famine, he may never reach his uh, optimum height the height that he would have reached had he been well nourished. The same thing happens with, say, intelligence. Even if a child inherits a good brain, restricted stimulation and poor education in childhood might mean that he never reaches his full intellectual potential. So far, I've said nothing in the least controversial, and I seriously doubt if anybody would argue with any of what I've said. According to the research quoted in his, this book by Francis Collins, there are percentages of mental traits or aspects of personality which are inherited. So, he has a table here, which is headed Estimates of the person that percentage of various human personality traits that can be ascribed to heredity. So, general cognitive ability, 50%. Extroversion, 54%. Conscientiousness, 49%. Aggression, 38%. Yeah, those personality traits can be inherited. Here then is a question, and it's a really, really simple one. If we take a group of Caribbeans and a group of white English people and compare them, we will see differences in physical appearance both within the groups and between them. 
Some of the Caribbeans might have lighter skin than others. A few might have blue eyes. Some will be short and others tall. The same will apply to the white group. However, there will also be noticeable and measurable physical differences between the two groups. You'll be able to see at a glance which group is the white one and which is from the Caribbean. Again, nothing controversial here. Now let's look at mental qualities, or personality traits, if you will. Within each group, some will be more clever than others, some will be more aggressive, more conscientious than the person next to him, and so on. We know that a lot of this is genetic, and in fact we can assign a percentage to the uh, amount of those qualities which has been inherited. This will be the same within both the white groups and the Caribbean. There will be variation mentally within the group. Here then is the question. Why should there not be a difference between the groups, just as there was with the physical characteristics, which is also partly genetic? What is it about these two things, both heavily influenced by genes, which means that what is true of physical traits is not true of aspects of personality or mental qualities? Even more bizarre, why can we freely discuss the role of genes in such things as diabetes and high blood pressure, sickle cell anemia and so on, which are things which are more likely to be found in the Caribbean group than that of the white English people, but that if we try and talk about cognitive ability or aggression, which are both also heavily influenced by genes, we will be shouted down as racists. I'm not advocating any position here and I've seen some truly awful reasoning used by both sides in this business, but it surely cannot be offensive to anybody to ask why. Why it is possible to discuss inherited physical traits and the way that they vary between human populations, but to be denounced as Nazis if we venture into the territory of mental faculties and abilities and personality traits and ask whether they vary between groups.